Hey up guys, Burnt Out Culture here. Uh, so following on from the relative success with the ST, um, the, the drive swap out and the, uh, you know, the, just a general clean inside the case, etc. I'd said that I was going to attempt the, uh, the Omega 1200 the same to, uh, you know, basically just literally do the same thing. Um, and I'd said, uh, my mate Mike, without further ado, retro, I'd said, if, if I do decide to do it, can we just sort of like, can you sort of do a, a basic, you know, in, instructional video on, on the actual drives, swap over a bit. Um, so I, I said, yeah, absolutely no problem. So this video will probably have a few jump cuts in it. Um, I've just ordered the new drive, replacement drive from, he kindly told me where to find it off. I won't have much success on eBay, so it's a, web, a website called omegakit.com. Uh, I think it's like 24, 25 quid delivered, um, which is absolutely fine. Um, so, obviously this is the case now, really hacky this thing uh, when I've opened it up. One thing I will say is, Mike, it's not as straightforward a job um, as the ST was. It's not as user friendly um, inside. Um, the drive swap out itself should be no problem at all. Um, quite basic. So, it's a Panasonic drive on this, which is fairly common. So, we've got the case, the top case off here. Um, that's not too bad actually. Yeah, I'll just probably just give it a soak in soapy water. You don't really need retro brighting as such, you just need a, a general clean really. Um, as regards to the keyboard, what I did find a big difference between the ST, so you can see this, I've, I've started to take the keys off. Um, that is, I don't know if you can see on the light there, but then that board that the keys are um, seated on is bloody filthy, it really is. Um, one major difference between the Amiga keyboard and the Atari ST key keyboard is for one, I don't know if mine's the general like this, but mine are bloody difficult to remove each key, literally to the point where I cut my finger open trying to pull them off. So I've got the remaining keys, I'll, I'll have to wear gloves and also, each key comes with its very own spring. So as you're taking them off, they're pinging all over. You've got to be really careful not to, you know, not to lose these uh, springs because you know they're crucial that you you need them for a, you know, to use and spring and what have you. The ones like this enter and the zero on the keypad. If you can see there, similar to the ST, it's got the little spring, uh, the little clip, the metal retaining clip. I'm going to keep them on, I think, this time, for fear of you know creating more work for myself. So I'll take. I'm then going to take the remaining keys off. I'll give them a good deep soak in the water, um, and clean this clean this board up. Um, so the keyboard on this is just attached by a ribbon cable. Um, which connects, I'll show you, sorry, let's move this out of the way, which connects to this corresponding uh, connector block here. Um, you know, no problem at all. The only other thing I've taken off apart from the casing screws is this, is the, the three lights. That just two little screws there which um, bolts to this bit, obviously, um, maybe that way, yeah. Yeah, so it bolts onto them two there. So that's, a, you know, there's no difficulty whatsoever yet. Um, now, what I did found with mine with this, so obviously I haven't taken it out yet, it's got like a retaining clip uh, bracket affair on this. Um, so, it was actually loose to begin with. Um, I'd, I'd loosened it off slightly, but the the actual uh, screw was loose. So I don't know if it had worked loose or or what, but um, yeah. So obviously, then Mike, all you've got is you've got them two 
um, you know, your ribbon cable obviously to remove from there and then your two little connections here uh, to just remove that one from the drive and it'll you'll be free and like you say um, is it Cine Steve or someone who's uh, already swapped them out hopefully the new one it'll be just the same but what I'll do is I'll do a jump cut here um, and I'll, I'll I'll show you the new one going in um, I'm actually as it happens I was, I was watching another uh, Gadget 164 uh, video last night where he's, he's he is refurbing this Amiga Amiga drive and it did make it look you know quite easy actually um, but I, I think I prefer still even with this one to put a new a new replacement drive in um, but this this case in general this, this bottom portion of the case needs a good blast from canned air as well because it you can't probably see me but it's it's bloody filthy um I'm not saying it's never been opened before because I think it had I think a couple of the uh, the case screws were were not genuine anyway so they've obviously been in it at some point but they didn't clean it whoever <laughs> whoever went in it could have been years ago for all I know but it's, I mean if you look at that look at this stain or something in this brown car it's a shame really um, but I may I may attempt at a later date to, to clean this up um, you know with earbud q-tip type, type things and some alcohol cleaner and then on the um, you obviously clean the heads and then you've got like a where the drive, uh, uh, what can we call it, like a, a screw, you, you, you sort of grease it up with uh, specialised uh, grease and, in, and apparently you can get them working as good as new really but I'll swap it out for now and we'll, we'll, we'll probably, I'll attempt that at a later date. Right so I'll jump cut to uh, the new one going in, cheers guys. Hi guys, uh, right so there's been quite a bit of time from uh, the last first part sorry, of this uh, video to the jump cut to this um, the reason for that is I've actually had quite a bit of difficulty in sourcing um, a replacement drive for this so now uh, my friend Mike um, without further ado retro had suggested to get one off AmigaKit.com now when I looked on there they didn't actually have any um, physical floppy drives they only had the, the GoTech um, like emulator drive, so I went back to eBay and eventually I got one of a, a seller that I was selling quite a few actually, and lo and behold, it's as you can see an identical model to the one we, we're replacing. Hopefully, this one will work. It's in a lot better condition. You can see that's quite heavily stained and what have you whereas this one you can just tell looking at it it's in much better shape so I've just next so first job I'm going to do is obviously take this this bracket off swap it onto that one and then um, we'll, we'll begin just to swap them over um, so other things I've done in the meantime is I've done quite a bit of cleaning like I said I was going to do so the top case as you can see now Soaked in warm soapy water, uh, got all the dirt out of the out of the vents. Um, minimal yellowing. Don't like I say, doesn't warrant really retro writing at all. I'm quite happy with to put that part together as it is. Um, the keyboard, <laughs> yeah. Finally got all the keys back on. Cleaned, cleaned the uh, the plate. Just give it a good thorough cleaning. Um, but like I say, if you are going to take the keys off and, and um, clean all this, be, be prepared. It's quite a laborious task um, and it does take quite a while. But it's well worth it in the end up. I mean, it sucks all these keys. Bit of yellowing on the keypad here, but I'm not too fussed about that. Um, just want to note, Mike, if you are doing it, be careful not to lose uh, this plastic ribbon cable. Um piece that will lock into back into the um, into the connection connector block there just goes in this bit there if you can see um, so right what I'll do is 
I'll do another little quick jump cut while I swap this, um, like I say, swap this bracket over onto the uh, onto the new drive, and then I'll I'll recommence filming, seating it into back into um, into the lower case itself. Okay, guys. So stage one complete. I'll just pan that around if we can a little bit. I need to move that in. Sorry, guys. So I've literally put the new drive in. Um, limited room on here. <laughs> so as you can see, all I've done is this little bracket here. Swapped it over from the old drive. There's one screw, one screw to fix to the drive. One screw to into the uh, into the bottom board there. And then all I've done is reconnected the ribbon cable and the the little pin connector there as well. Um, now I'm gonna. Uh, reconnect the um, the keyboard back into there, and then we'll hopefully we shouldn't be a million miles away. Then I'll just uh, I'll just pan out, do another little jump cut. So keyboard now seated in. Um, also, I forgot I forgot to mention earlier I'd, the bottom uh, casing. I did give a really good blast with uh, with canned air. Give it a nice. Um, Wipe over, not da not damp, but just just with like a clean, um, like lint free cloth, and I blasted out all the dust. There was so much crap on the motherboard; it all came out. There's loads of gaps where you can blast it out from. Um, so I got loads of gunk out from there. So that were really good. Right, so I've inserted the keyboard back on now onto the lower casing. One thing just to note: that little plastic fixing. Whatever you call it, bracket for the uh, for this ribbon cable. Just make sure it is. It will come. It will be loose once you pull this ribbon cable away. So, just make a note of which way round it is. Um, um, just just to make just to make sure because if it, if it goes on the wrong way, um, is a danger. It is a danger. It will snap. Um, so that's now that's now connected in. So the only thing we need to do now. Hopefully, is reconnect this uh, the drive light, power light, etc. to these two screws here. Uh, reconnect the case in the top case, and then uh, then jobs are good in, I think. So I'll um, I'll do one final jump cut, and hopefully the next time you see it be done. Okay, guys. So case is all back together. Um, a few things to note then. Um, just to summarise, mine had two types of screws. The screws that were more um, like bolt type, you know, threaded like a bolt, non non self tapping screws. They were around the drive area. The other, just normal self tapping small screws, around the cases. So when you do take them out, just note, keep them separately, and wear. Just make notes where they actually came from. Uh, the second thing is, when you do put the top case on, the keyboard uh, seats into like a little rebate, like a three sort of prong rebate. Make sure that's seated in right um, before you start lifting up the case to you know to actually physically screw the screws in because it may want to come back and then come loose. So it will it will sit into a definite sort of seated position in, in these like little rebates um, and the third one when you just you know just have a little bit of patience with it the wiring for the um, the lights here just needs to be moved out of the way so in that case not, you know be careful not to trap them um, just basically take your time with it because like I say also when you're screwing when you're screwing them in just be really sort of Nice and steady with it. Don't over screw them because obviously these cases are thirty years plus old. They've probably had the the screws in and out numerous times, so it's nice just to just to take it nice and steady. But she's good to go now. Um, I'll do another little video. Uh, hopefully with games running, <laughs> games running this time. Um, but yeah, it's been a. <clears throat> been fairly easy to be honest there's no reason why anyone couldn't attempt this um, 
you know, I drive swap out. Mine, admittedly, mine was a like for like drive. Um, this Panasonic JU253 um, could be, so it would literally, you know, take out, put in. There's two or three different types you can get for these 1200s. I think the, any any drive that works on the Amiga 600 works on the, the 1200 as well. Um, so there may be just slight differences when you're putting in your new your new drive if it's not a Panasonic one. But you know what? I'm I'm not super technical or handy with this, but you know, absolutely dead easy. Admittedly, compared to the ST, it were probably slightly trickier, but you know, it shouldn't trouble anyone with a that can handle a screwdriver to be honest. So yeah, I hope um I hope you found this useful. Especially Mike if you if you fancy having a go, Mike, there's no reason why you couldn't do this yourself, mate. Dead easy, real easy. Um so right guys, thank you for watching. Take it easy.